Hello, welcome to our relation classes. If you haven't met me, my name is Blessing Sule, aka the Fertile Mom. Um, I'm a health coach, fertility coach, and fertility nutritionist. I help people who are trying to conceive naturally through lifestyle and diet, um, supplements, multivitamins, and natural therapies that increase their chances of conception to at least 80% and then we teach ovulation just like this class we teach you how to select the sex of your child how to know when you are ovulating so that you can meet your partner at the right time and how to avoid pregnancy naturally and then today is our first ovulation class and um, the topic of today is ovulation fact we are going to be learning some basic misconceptions about ovulation so i have some my book here I have some bullet bullet points I don't want to be all over the place so that we can do the right thing so the first thing we're going to be learning today is what is ovulation ovulation is when the egg release from the egg sac that's the ovary and then uh, comes into your womb so that the sperm can meet it and then you will get pregnant it will fertilize and you get pregnant so that is ovulation is the release of the egg from the ovary from the egg sac so number two we have does ovulation happen every month well yes and no ovulation happens every cycle it's supposed to happen every cycle because if i say every month some cycles are longer than a month personally i have a 32 day cycle which is more than a month one day longer than a month so that's not a month some people have 35 days some people have shorter cycles than a month some their cycles are not up to a month so ovulation is supposed to happen every in every cycle but it doesn't happen in every cycle for every woman but at least 90 percent of women ovulate every cycle we are not going so much into that subsequent classes will explain some of the things that i'm mentioning here like cycle and the rest and then the third point is um, ovulation cannot be calculated so oftentimes than not when i'm discussing with i'm um, trying to interrogate my prospective clients and know what the challenge is i'm like um when do you know when you ovulate what are the what are the signs you look out for during ovulation and they go someone go like um, i calculate my ovulation like five days after my menses ovulation cannot be calculated at all when you do that sometimes when you get it correct it's a guesswork and then number three is um, number four say ovulation cannot be assumed some 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 will say okay my my period was I, I i ovulate 14 days after my menses that is assumption you are not sure you just know because you read that the textbook way of ovulation is 14 days after cycle after period it doesn't happen like that always in short never at all should you assume your ovulation it, uh, you do not necessarily ovulate on the same day in every cycle like for a person who have a 28 day cycle you don't expect to be ovulating every 14 days after your cycle like you're dividing the cycle into two it doesn't happen like that all the time all the time but i will go into that later it doesn't happen like that and then there are some people that do not bother about anything every time they are all about their app i impute my ovulation date my i impute my menses date and then it shows me i'm going to be ovulating on xyz it doesn't happen like that all the time you cannot solely depend on your ovulation app 100 percent because it is not for your ovulation needs because it is not 100 percent effective because the ovulation app is saying all things be equal you should be ovulating on this day or around this date but as it is now all things cannot be equal because you have um, some certain factors that affect our entire cycle and but let me narrow it to ovulation like um, weather condition your illness taking antibiotics um, emotional stress and all that a lot of things that affect 
our ovulation. So on your ovulation app, you do not have the space to impute that I was sick, I was stressed, my son was this, my husband angered me, I was too happy, I traveled out of my, my comfort zone, it was too hot, it was too cold, or I changed my diet for a week. There's no space on your ovulation app like that. So when you experience any of these changes or some of these changes and you go back to your app, you are most likely going to get the wrong result, especially for those who are trying to pre-select the sex of their children. You will get it wrong. So it is not, you are not um, supposed to solely depends on, on, depend on your ovulation app. And that is why you cannot assume your ovulation because when you are assuming that, okay, because my period came on so, so, so date, I should be ovulating on so, so, so date. Because of these changes, your body will bring it back or take it forward or you might not ovulate at all. But you did not take note because in your head, you are going to ovulate on this day. So, <clears throat> and then our point number eight says um, ovulation occurs once in every cycle in each cycle ovulation occurs only once in on it like or your uh, on it you know in every 24 hours ovulation occurs only once your body might try to ovulate but maybe due to these factors that i mentioned here it will stop and then start all over again doesn't mean you ovulated but i'll come deep into this particular thing i'm saying later in the classes so if in the case of twins, triplets, quadruplets, sextuplets, and all that, the egg released just in one 24 hours, it can release in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, but saying you, you, you ovulate today and tomorrow, it doesn't happen like that. And then finally, you ovulate before you menstruate. This is the topic that most people are so, so confused about. You ovulate before you menstruate. Let me give you a typical example. Like for some of you who are on this program right now, are taking this class, you have children, you see that you know a lot of women that get pregnant and, and, and gave birth and then they took him before their first menses. Most of, a lot of people, you, even if it has not happened to you or your neighbor or your sister, you've heard stories of someone got, got pregnant even before her period returned. How do you think that happened? It's not magic. It happened because she ovulated before her period came. came. And because most, you know, 90% of the time, you ovulate before your period will come. But for people who don't ovulate, but they will see their period, it is called breakthrough bleeding. So, but when you are normal, your ovulation will come before you, you menstruate. So let me tell you how, let me explain a bit how it happens. At the beginning of your cycle, your body starts preparing itself your womb start preparing itself for implantation fertilization and ovulation so it's going to nourish your womb it's going to nourish your uterine lining you know your uterus have a lining a line where it has three sections so the upper section is the one that that comes thick become luscious nourishes itself so that when you get pregnant this fertilization the baby will come out implant implantation means when the baby is holding hands attaching to your body so that you will not have a miscarriage or a steel bed so when the baby is going to attach to your womb it is called implantation and your womb needs to be well nourished to be thick enough for that baby to implant to hold hands so that the baby will not go off so what happens is when your body when your cycle begins your womb start nourishing itself start preparing for that ovulation so it becomes thick so once as so that as soon as the egg drops and the sperm fertilizes it there should be implantation but once but if you did not meet a man during your ovulation or you meet a man but your body happens not to fertilize this the, the thickness of the womb sheds itself in form of a period it, it sheds its thickness out in form of menses so that it will start all over again. So the shedding of that thickness of the womb is called bleeding. It calls menses. Meanwhile, ovulation had taken place before. But when ovulation did not take place, the womb still goes ahead to nourish itself. So, so some people that are favored, let me not say lucky, luck is, not, is lucky of the word. 
For we Christians, we say favored. So for those who are favored a bit, even when they don't ovulate, the womb still shed itself so that it will continue again to give your body a chance of possible ovulation. For some people, it doesn't happen. So that will be all for today's class. Our next class, we are going to be learning about our cycle phases. So take care. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.